bed bugs for them to need some. Oh, yeah. Oh we are live. Okay, that morning, is fabulous. Yeah. Awesome. That is fabulous, fabulous news. That's how we get stuff done. Yeah. <laughs> we have a Dodger fan on our feed that is oh, talking. No. Who is it? Ryan. Which Ryan? Butcher. Oh, uh-uh. Uh-uh. No more tickets for you, Butcher. <laughs> he's all, I'll tell you, uh, he's on our picture that I posted, I'll tell you. He says, go Dodgers. I said, not going to happen. And he said, it's all, It's still early. Which, yes, it's still early. It's only May. Lots of season left, Eloise. Besides, you can't win every series. Who said? <laughs> we could split it. Yeah. I'd love to win. Uh, we're going to win. I think, you know, I take am, tonight. It's a four-game series, so. Sometimes you have to let them win one out of pity. <laughs> there may be a little trash talking today. It's their throwback jersey day. <laughs> we, have, we have a couple of Dodger fans that watch. Good morning, Leandra. Hi, Dad. Hi, Bob. Hi, Ace. Let me double check and make sure that link is on there. If not, I can add it. Okay. You have a second, don't worry. Hmm? You have a second. Okay. I think I just, I copied and pasted it originally. Yes, the tiny URL is on here. Okay. <laughs> you ready? Yep. Welcome to Today in Yuma. I'm Jennifer Blackwell. And I'm Teresa Straub. We are live here on Z93, Outlaw Country, MonsterMediaYuma.com, and the FTS Automotive Facebook live feed. And we have a busy, busy morning. Yes, now, we, we do. For, first off, it's also been a busy evening for some of our legislators and the governor. <laughs> they, uh, the governor signed the education bill a little after 6 o'clock this morning, I believe. Mm -hmm. And I need to silence my phone. Sorry about that. And we don't know yet uh, from the all of the local educators if they will all be going back tomorrow. I know yesterday the high school district shared their release and said Thursday no school because at that point they didn't know where, where the budget would stand. Exactly. But they said they would be back Friday. And we're just thinking that's probably going to be the case because they're already trying to come up with ways to make up these missed days. Exactly. And just another day would be more uh, another challenge for them to try and overcome. I know Crane has opted to extend their school year two days to June 1st and June 4th. Uh, that's for, I think, Ronald Reagan. Were they the only, they were the only ones that missed school. Ronald Reagan was the only one um, that actually missed school days um, during the actual walkout. Okay, and I think that was the 26th and 27th when they were out of school. Yes. I do not yet have any definitive indication from the Yuma Union High School District or Elementary District 1 how they plan to make up those days. And they're probably formulating all of that today because now they'll have an idea of exactly how many days and hours need to be made up. Exactly. And as, as soon as we get that information, we'll be sharing it with you all. Um, usually it's not till towards the afternoon, but as soon as we do, we'll get it to you. All right. We have a guest we are going to join right now because we have a busy morning. Dr. Paula Rivadonera is here. And I've been practicing that. You did great. Did, did the, she? The did she? I was perfect. Oh, did she say it right? Yes. Oh, absolutely. good. I practiced outside in the other studio, and she verified it was correct. So, or Dr. Paula, the poop doctor. There That's what what your email is, or, or one of your other titles. And we have you here today, Paula, because people, a lot of people in our community, actually worldwide at this point, have questions about E. coli and how Yuma growers are working to keep our fresh produce safe. And there have been some some additional updates as far as the CDC website goes on the romaine lettuce information that's been taking place. And you are going to be participating in a community forum tomorrow. And we have you here today because we, we want to see if you can answer some questions, but we also want to encourage people to get signed up for the event tomorrow. Yeah, great. I'd be happy to do that. We've been getting a lot of phone calls um, at University of Arizona Cooperative Extension about this situation. I'm the food safety extension specialist. And so people are asking all kinds of questions like how does this happen and what can I do to protect myself? And so we thought it would be a great idea, uh, my colleague Chana Rock and I, um, to put on this forum so that we could just have people join us and answer their questions right there. Well, I'm, I'm happy you guys are doing this because even Jen and I, when this first broke, we were seeing some horrible comments and just straight out rumors that of how this happened and 
you know, to a community like Yuma, this is something that is very, very important to us because it could be detrimental to our winter, you know, ag industry. So I'm glad that you guys stepped up and said, you know what, let's take this on. Let's answer all these questions these people have because we don't want that misinformation to lead to something no, negative. But, and not only right. is it a huge part of our economy in the Yuma community, but every single one of us knows, if not one, multiple individuals involved in the farming community, whether it's someone who's a foreman or field workers that work, work out there. The comments I saw, I was telling Paula, as soon as it broke on April 13th, you start seeing it on media statewide, and then it spread further. But there were some Phoenix media outlets, and some of the comments were alluding to the fact that field workers were relieving themselves in the fields, and that is simply not the case. That is absolutely not the case. Um, in fact, our farmers, uh, they follow very strict regulations. So not only do we have the Food Safety Modernization Act, which is from the federal government, um, they abide by the rules of the Leafy Green Marketing Agreement. And through that agreement, there are very strict food safety rules. And one of them is that there has to be a porta potty or some sort of restroom facilities um, within a, a 15 minute walking distance or a five minute drive. And the workers uh, can leave the field whenever they need to. There has to be running water, soap, paper towels, there and they're checked repeatedly and they're checked not only by the field managers and the field supervisors they're checked by the food safety directors for each farm they're checked by third-party auditors they get surprise audits and so this is standard operating procedure there is no place that you will find that they do not have porta potties available well the the toll of those that have become ill with a possible connection to the romaine lettuce has increased at this point paula I know the CDC reported more cases and one death has resulted now from the what you know what they're saying is the romaine outbreak. Now, yes. can you shed any insight into how they track this information? So, we do have a trace back system where the FDA can find out where something where the the lettuce was grown who shipped it, which cooler it went to, and follow it all the way farm to fork, right? And so that's kind of what they do is they work their way backwards. And they, they ask people, you know, if they've gotten sick with E. coli, it's confirmed. And they say, what have you eaten in the past month? Now, can you imagine? I don't know what I had for breakfast <laughs> yesterday. Me either. Yeah. But people have to actually sit down and make a journal and figure out every single thing they ate, every place they ate, where they bought it, what the packaging was. And they do this in a very detailed way so that they can kind of find that common denominator. And that's how they made it back to romaine lettuce and figuring that out. That said, um, there's been some issues, they claim, with the trace back so that they have not been able to identify the source of contamination yet. And you've been hearing one particular area farm associated with, with a bunch of these stories and that has not been verified. It has not, and so what they've reported is that there is one farm in Yuma that they say grew the lettuce that was shipped to the correctional facility in Alaska where those eight people, it was six or eight people, um, did get sick there, but they very specifically said that the contamination was not found on that farm and that they don't know where the contamination came from. And the problem is that when they report that, people just hear the farm name yeah. and assume that that's where it came from, and that is not at all the case. And, and you know, and, and growing up in the Yuma community, you can go a half a mile down the road and find a field that has workers in it and watch them work and watch how protected they are when they're, they're wearing gloves, their hair is pulled back, all these, all these different precautions that they take. So to hear, you know, all these different rumors is, in, is, is, is really sad, but it changes so many hands. It changes so many hands. You never know exactly, and, and that's what you guys try to do is try to find out, but sometimes, like you said, it's almost impossible. It's very difficult because you think about, you know, if you've got a whole head lettuce that's just being packaged in the field and sent off to a supermarket, that's one thing. You've only gotten a certain number of people to touch it. But if you now have a product that has to go to the cooler, the processor, it's, being, it's getting cut, it's being put into bags, then there are safeties along the way. We do mm -hmm. test product along the way, but it's still a really challenging thing. The more people touch that product, the more risk there is that there's going exactly. to be contamination. Well, Teresa and I tried to encourage our listeners, especially during the winter months, because we had uh, you know, an, an increase in population like we always do, about some of the changes that have taken place. Her husband works with an organization that deals with agriculture on a, on a regular basis, reminding people not to let their animals run in these fields. And mo a lot of them, I don't know that all of them are, or cord cordoned off in some manner anymore if they're growing food crops right. to, to create barriers to keep people out. but. 
um, sometimes the dogs can get in and things can happen. I didn't, I wasn't aware as just a normal consumer that the standards had changed so much, but I believe it was you, Paula, that mentioned before, even birds. Mm -hmm. You know, if they, if you, if a farmer or someone comes across something in the field, there's proper protocol to alert. Would that be you, the individual? Uh, not necessarily me. So what happens is a field worker might find some fecal material in the field. They'll notify their supervisor. The supervisor then notifies the food safety director. They come out and they do an investigation. And so even if there is one piece of poop in the field, they are required to buffer a minimum of five feet around that and not harvest at least five feet. Now, a lot of the buyers of that produce will say five feet's not enough. I'm, I'm too worried about it. Let's do more. And so they'll say, we don't want anything within 50 feet of a single piece of poop or even a hundred feet wow. within a single piece of poop wow. so you can imagine when a flock of birds lands they could lose an entire field and they will do that because they don't want to risk someone getting sick they don't want to risk that contamination and there may not be any pathogenic bacteria in there meaning bacteria that can make you sick but they don't want to risk it and so they will give up that field for that reason and so they are, have very strict policies about that well, someone mentioned before, too, they said, you know, the responsibility also lies on the consumers, too. You need to make sure you wash your vegetables. And I understand this E. coli, yeah. the e. coli strain is pretty hardcore anyway, but um, so I think some of the FDA officials are saying that it's not necessarily vegetable washing that could, you know, rectify that particular situation. But people think if it comes out of a bag or it's been misted in the grocery store, it's good to go. Right. They do think that, especially when the bag says triple washed. Now, that's great that they triple wash it, but you don't know if maybe the chlorine levels were off that day, right? Or you don't know if that bag of salad actually sat out in a temperature that was not appropriate mm -hmm. for a little while longer than it should have. And so you don't know what's happened to that product along the way. And so for me, I always open my bag salad. I actually, because I'm the laziest person I know, I fill my sink with water, dump it right into the sink <laughs> with a little bit of uh, vinegar and lemon juice, two minutes of contact time, rinse it off and then I'll eat it. And that, you can make sure there's no weird debris in your salad or anything like that, which they do get out during the processing. Mm -hmm. But it's just another safety measure. There, There is um, a certain amount of responsibility that the consumer also has to take. Well, I, I in, in a grocery store, too, some of the items, other people have actually touched yes. these. Oh, how many times, times have you seen and... kids walk up and touch it and take it to mom or put it back or just touch it because there's water on it? You know, I see it all the time. Absolutely. And so you think about how careful the farmers are in not harvest any, harvesting anything within five feet or 50 feet. And then you go to the supermarket and there's kids <laughs> sneezing on it. Yes. So <laughs> you just never know. <laughs> well, at the community forum tomorrow, these questions will be addressed and many more. And we're encouraging people to get signed up for this. Yes. It's kind of a weird link. So to make it easier, I know you've you've already got over 100 people that have signed up. Yes. And it's at the 3C building at Arizona Western College, so they can accommodate quite a few more. Yes. Just go to our website at monstermediayuma.com. It is on the news page. And if you scroll down past the 14-year-old arrested for social media threats and the school closures <laughs> and the shooting update, it will say U of A Cooperative Extension to hold community forum to provide information about E. coli, and the link is right there. Great. <laughs> we Perfect. have a lot going on. <laughs> I know, right I know. Now. <laughs> I'll, go, I'll go ahead and paste it on my I was going to say, put it on your Facebook. It's probably a lot easier. I know we want them to go to the website, but geez. <laughs> Well, it's also, you know, I'm sure the chamber doesn't like me sharing all those particular stories, but that's what's happening. Okay. All right. And the event is coming up tomorrow. What time? 11.30. And we're going to start very promptly at 11.30. We know there's going to be a lot of questions. So we have some short presentations, um, and then we really are just going to open it up for questions. We want it to be kind of a town hall format where people can come and just ask their questions and get the answers they need. And, and don't be afraid to ask questions. Some there's not a dumb question. My, no. my, I'm embarrassed to ask a people who I think of that I'm, you know, not the brightest. But seriously, everyone, ha everyone has thought that. And you know what? We'd rather you ask those questions so that you get the informed answer, and we're not spreading those Rumors that could be detri detrimental to Yuma or any Yuma farmers or anything like that. So go get yourself educated that way. You know, hopefully you can start spreading the actual truth instead of those rumors that we're hearing. Yes, that's true. Now, as far as the the lettuce crops, I know that they're they've all been harvested. Yes. You know what kind of on. what kind of life remains for something that's out there that could be any contaminant, whether it's from our region or not. So. Basically, the, the romaine will have about a 21-day shelf life. 
but we haven't shipped romaine out of here in weeks at this point. Um, the Arizona Leafy Green Marketing Agreement has assured everyone that no romaine has left here. Um, we, we should be beyond the 21 day shelf life, but we're not entirely sure, so there could be a few days left of it. But it's always best to find out where your romaine came from. They're still advising to check and make sure that it didn't come from Yuma if you are going to eat it. And if you can't tell, because it doesn't necessarily say Yuma on your package. Mm -hmm. So if you can't tell, you're not sure, just get rid of it. And they keep saying, well, uh, ask your, your server to restaurant if the lettuce is from the Yuma region. They're not going to know. They have oh, no and idea. And you know what? I, I, to their defense, I have a few friends that are servers, and they've been getting this question, so they found out. Good. They asked the, the, the business owners, hey, you know, we're getting these questions, so they're able to, they're actually able to, hopefully they're able to answer. I know that the few friends that I have are able to answer that question because they need in in our in our community i i hate to think that somebody would actually go out and put something that's going to be making you sick and i think our business owners have done a good job of yeah that i agree well susie Irwin says i love you paula and cindy says hi paula <laughs> now because your other hat involves animals and all the amazing things you do in the community one of the i and it may be the same person that posted multiple times when i would share details about the the e coli issue involving romaine uh, they said throw it out. She's recommending that people take it to Phoenix so that the reptiles can eat it because they their systems process differently. Any information about that? Uh, they do, but I it's still wouldn't to, give it to them. No, okay. Yeah. Throw well, it it's away. a long way to yeah, go. Throw it's it a away. long way to go. Uh, yeah, I would just throw it out. All right. There we go. Better safe than sorry. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Again, I did share that link on both my Facebook and the station Facebook page. But if you'd like to go read all I that news, question. you can oh. always check that out. Anita yeah. has a question. I'm, I was just, you know, I um, compost. So if you're a composter, is this a product that you want to put in your composting bin? That is a wonderful question. If you are composting in a way that you actually are getting the temperature up to 131 degrees the way you're supposed to, if you're actually managing your compost pile, it should kill all of the pathogens. Perfect. And so, yes as long as you're composting properly. Well, there awesome. you go. Thank you. <laughs> See, and I would not have thought of that. Me neither. Leave it to Anita. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good thing. That's a good leave. Yes, that's a good thing. Thank you. I appreciate that. All right. Anything else you'd like to address right now other than come out tomorrow? Yes, please. Come out tomorrow. We're happy to answer your questions. If you can't get in for some reason because maybe we've reached capacity, mm -hmm. feel free to just send me an email or give me a call, and maybe we'll do a follow-up one as well if we have enough interest. They should probably have someone Facebook Live it. Oh, or YouTube Ooh. Live. That's a great idea. Make, make that happen. All right. We'll I'm, find I, a way. I will. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, always a pleasure having you here, Dr. You. Paula Ribadonera, here on Today in Yuma on Z93, Outlaw Country, MonsterMediaYuma.com. Time for our Lotus Day Spa and Salon Selfie out in the courtyard. We'll be back after the break. The show's brought to you by Classic Accounting. With 30 years of experience and knowledge, you can trust Classic Accounting with your business payroll and monthly bookkeeping needs. Call them today at 343-1040. And Sprague Sports offers training courses, including Arizona CCW, First Shot, Hunter Education, and more. Plus, there's always a gunsmith on duty. You can find them on 32nd Street next to Lowe's. And tomorrow is not only Catch It Friday, it's Free, free filter, filter Friday. Friday. That's a quick refrigeration. All you need to do is go to their location at 190 West 10th Street, take in your old, dirty, dusty, dingy air filter, and they will swap it out and give you a brand new, free, standard one-inch air filter. That's quick refrigeration. And our friends over at Advocate Pest and Wildlife Specialists, I love this. Um, May is Law Enforcement Appreciation Month, and they are celebrating by offering everyone the Blue Special. Get two months of service for the price of one, $50 for the first month, second consecutive month for free. And for all of you law enforcement officers out there, uh, coming up on May 14th through the 18th, go to their Facebook page because they have specials just for law enforcement officer, officers. So definitely want to stay tuned to Advocate Pest and Wildlife Specialist Facebook page. Coming up next, Janet Jones and Terry Irizarry with Yuma Orchestra on Today in Yuma. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. That was awesome. You asked great questions. <laughs> thank you, Anita, for that, too. Uh, yes. Yeah. I would have never thought about it. <laughs> I'm just afraid someone's going to open the bag and then touch it exactly. and then Good point. don't get sick. Yeah. Shoes. Yeah. Shoes. I don't know. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I have my Paula took her shoes off. No, I got them. I got them. <laughs> Smile. Awesome. Yay. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, guys. It was great to see Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Oh, God. That's so funny. That's terrible. 
but I'll, if I could, I would. That's why I was hoping for something. Well, thank you guys so much. It was thank you. you. Thank you for all you do, Paula. We appreciate you. Oh, I appreciate you guys. <laughs> Grab. I'm gonna grab these lights real quick. Okay. Give my friend a hug. You can come and hang out. With Hi, Janet. How are you? Okay, I need to. Oh, I need to grab. Okay, no, we don't have another. We chair. started before <laughs> I had a chance. Just to my light. We just jumped right in after the the city show. Hi. Hi. It's a pleasure to see you. Hi. Hi. I never see you. I know. How are you? Good. So glad you're here. So go ahead and All have right. a seat. You ladies can have a seat in those two chairs over there. Oh. We'll just make sure you pull those microphones up close to you. I'm going to just call it around the other side. I don't think I'm going to see. Okay. 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 There's probably Elizabeth with Resort Rewards. <laughs> <laughs> you have Or Google. I can help you manage your account. <laughs> it's, a, it's not Elizabeth, but it's someone else. Let me count the ways I can scam you. It's 12.40 p.m. Yeah. and afternoon games. <laughs> Today, 30 bucks. Yeah. Um, I thought, you're playing like, I thought they used to take one day off. Uh, they had, what are they playing now? Dodgers. It's a four game okay. series. Uh -huh. Yeah, I know. I think they match up four times this season. <laughs> Really have to win today. Yeah, they yes, because we want them yes. to take the series. Right. Will it be 11 in a row or 10? 10. 10. Okay. I thought that they had it. I thought it was a three game. No, mm -hmm. it's it's a four game this one, so they're keeping us on our toes. Oh, that was disheartening. Like, What's yep. that? That was disheartening last night. Did it's you, okay. Did you happen to see that three weeks ago where it was the bottom of the ninth and they're behind? Yes. You know, and then and they pull it out. They pull it out. Yeah, but we so had we're a hoping. We, we had a Vila, and well, I don't have much. <laughs> I, I look at her page, and she's like, she's like, darn Avila. Uh -huh. <laughs> or is it well, Avila? Had, Avila? <laughs> it's Avila. They say it Avila. It might be Avila, but they say it Avila. But we had two on base, yes. and then him up hitting, and I'm like, we're done. <laughs> I don't even have any faith in you. Sorry, but I don't. Aww. Somebody was saying last night, come on, Goldie, why don't you? Playing one time and surprise the pitcher. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we ready? Yep. Welcome back to Today in Yuma. I'm Jennifer. And I'm Teresa. We want to thank Dr. Paula so much for coming in and giving us a little bit, a little information about the E. coli situation. And yes. they will be addressing that and so much more tomorrow at that forum. So again, if you're interested in attending, just follow the, the link that I shared. It's both on our website and also on my page and the station page. That's right. We're going to change the gears. We're covering the arts a little bit. We've got some orchestra stock talk coming up and then one of the Littlewoods. Yes. Which Littlewood was that? That's Leah. Leah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I know you can't tell them apart, but yes. I can't. I just haven't seen him in a, in a while. But I, Usually Leah's the one that always has paint on her. <laughs> <laughs> she always does. Well, that explains the shoes out in the courtyard too. Yeah, yeah our exactly. Local artist. <laughs> now with us in the studio, we have Janet Jones and Terry Irizarry with Yuma Orchestra. Thanks for coming in, ladies. Thanks for Thank having you. us. Yeah. Well, we're excited to have you here. Give us some information about what is coming up. Well, this is our poster that we have, and we have a concert this Saturday, uh, May 5th, at Copa High School at the Orchestral Classics with this... Yuma Civic Orchestra, the Young String Ambassadors, the Twinklers, and the Regular String Ambassadors, and it's a pretty much a cla truly classical concert. So, because it, classical music, which is standard repertoire. So, and you didn't bring any props today. Props? You're not going to play any music uh, for us. Well, we want them to want to go. <laughs> <laughs> Well, um, tickets are just $15 for general admission, right. and they can be purchased at the Yuma Arts Center. Is it too late to buy them online, or can they also do that online? Yes, they can buy them online. Okay, and that email is yumashowtickets.com. Yes. They make it super easy. You don't yes. even have to get out of your car and go anywhere. Exactly. Well, what are some of the things we can expect to see at the show on Saturday? Well, before the ticket prices, um, children 12 and under, there's no admission charge. Oh, good. I hate the word free, but there's no admission charge. <laughs> and AWC students, it's only $5. They just have to show their IDs. So, okay. Um, if you're a student, 
so that we want to make sure that it's, it's accessible to our, our college students as well. Uh, some of the music we'll be playing is by the Coriolan Overture by Beethoven, Hungarian Rhapsody by Franz Liszt, um, Carmen Suite, all, things that people are really familiar or should be familiar with. And and at live, it's, we have we used to say here at live on our um, little posters, but now we've changed it to experience at live because that, when that's that, true. When the music wraps around you, it's really, really incredible. One person just said she just burst into tears because it's just all around here and she had never experienced, she didn't grow up hearing classical music. Really? So we've had to change our venue of course because at Cibola it was flooded and and uh, that's where it would normally be. And of course it's Cinco de Mayo on Saturday <laughs> so we couldn't go to the Art Center because nobody could get into parking because it's going to be crazy down there. So we were at Copa High School we're very pleased the high school district and Gina Thompson and everybody's worked really well with us, Amy Violette, and uh, to make it so that we'll, we'll be at uh, Copa High School rather than at Cibola, so we're trying to get that word out. Now, and how long will the event last? It starts at 6.30 with the pre-show of the little guys, the little twinklers and their little smiles and, and sparkly bow ties. And um, that goes to the young string ambassadors and the senior string ambassadors, and the, and so that that they're they're kind of the pre-show. We're really an education program as well, right? Performance-based uh, entity. So um, we just show how the progression goes, and then the civic orchestra will take over probably about seven ten. So, and there's quite a following in the human community, as far as well. Music in general. I mean, there's a tremendous following and a lot of talented individuals, too. Right. So we're very blessed. And, of course, Terry makes it all happen here. <laughs> she's our event coordinator, and, and she's... Yes, so excited to be working with the orchestra. It just, it's well, wonderful. The Yuma Orchestra Association has been in the Yuma community for a very long time. Why don't you give us a little um, history on what you guys do? Well, because you guys have quite a few different ensembles playing with you guys, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. how does that that work? Are they all part of the organization, or? Well, we we're part of a consortium which includes AWC, the Human High School District, and the Yuma Orchestra Association, and we performed that be, formed that in 1991 because it wasn't we couldn't have enough people. We didn't get enough. Um, there's not enough revenue to cover a teacher for each school or school district so now we, we uh, pulled our resources together and that started in 1991 but the orchestra association was formed in 1976 so it's been we're in our 42nd 40, wow. yeah, 43rd year so um, but the, the schools will sponsor it we're sort of a booster club to make mm -hmm. sure that any child or any there's enough music there's enough instruments and anybody you cannot afford lessons or private tuition or school tuition that we make sure we're, we're truly an entity and, and out for it to make sure that any child or any anyone it, who wants to play can play no matter what age. And what, what are the prerequisites then perhaps? Do so they have to have at least a certain level of skill in order to join or to be involved? Uh, starting to, with the youngest students, the, the twinklers, uh, we we're, we're encourage them to be a certain age and then to we're going to be make sure that they're reading music and and that when you get up to the civic orchestra it's an audition so you have to make oh. sure. We also have the human civic light orchestra where people learn to play independently so there's a lot of different groups and the high schools this allows us to have our classes there and it's just a wonderful that's what a great consortium. Yeah, a good cr collaboration right. there, too, in the community. Well, where can people find out more information about your organization? Or do you have a website, social media presence? Where can we track that down? YumaOrchestra.org is our website, and it pretty much has uh, everything, all the history, all the information about our conductors, all of our events, um, pretty much anything about us you can find on our website. Now, are you mu musically inclined, Terry? I am. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do or play? I play the violin. And, uh, and She's doing a great job. Yes. And Janet plays the violin and the viola and the cello. <laughs> so she's very musically talented as well as the conductor. And we can yes. we can see both of you guys on stage this weekend? Not me. 
She's at orchestra workshop. She's training. That that's the class that we have on Thursday, where there's three levels, and so it's it's very progressive and structured. So I see. you guys, why aren't you guys in the program? <laughs> <laughs> because I have no musical. I can play a radio. <laughs> <laughs> you should play there. Radio. We have, anyone who wants to start to play, no matter what age, and we have an instrumental rental program, and Fretworks has a lot of instruments for rental. You know, so it's it's. It's accessible in Yuma. So. I, I like that because again, we're very, very musical community, and I, I think I want to see the Twinklers. Oh, I, know. I, I always, always love to watch the little ones. What's <laughs> the age of, of the Twinklers? Is there uh, usually the five to seven? Oh my goodness! And they can read music yeah. by then. Yeah. Oh yeah. See, it's just like again I have no musical oh background God. so <laughs> we had a keyboard and it had stickers on it so I can right. play a little Elvis well, and the stickers are on there all right all you need to know is if you can hear the pitch or tone you yeah. have to be able to properly um, Anita's saying you have to be able to um, hear the pitch or the tone when you, when you play. When so. you're especially uh, stringed instruments, mm -hmm. because you have to tune them appropriately. Yeah. Well, the Yuma Orchestra Association is also a 501c3 nonprofit. So if you would like to make a donation, I bet they would let you. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> we want we want to keep this program alive. I'm growing the Community Foundation, the Sturgis Foundation. We would not be able to exist without the support of our community and and the, all of the entities, the high school, the college, and so on. Shandy Topper wanted to make sure that she's mentioned it. She she directs the little the Twinklers, the younger the ones. Junior, yeah. Okay. So, so she's she's our concert master as well. So. Well, that is this Saturday, and I know there are many events going on around the community. You can still go out and check out the Fire Muster on Main Street in the morning. Then you can go cool off. Exactly. And some of the other Cinco de Mayo events on Main start around 3 o'clock. Exactly. So then go inside and cool off and enjoy some beautiful music that's probably relaxing. Just a nice time. Mm -hmm. Now, what kind of dress is required for this? Um, usually Clothing. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Please, uh, uh, I'm, I'm going to advise you. Now, this is Jennifer speaking. Probably no tank tops and cut-off shorts, okay? Right. It, uh, it, 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 it's a classier type of event. But we don't want to exclude anyone, but... Yeah, we just want people t to go and do... Usually casual is fine, and <laughs> shoes, and, you know, so we see... see no oh, we're just glad, we're just no dress glad code, okay. <laughs> We're just glad to have people there. Sometimes you hear dress to impress, and I'd like to think, oh, you know what? Take a little effort. Yeah, just a little bit. Yeah, effort. a little bit of effort. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. nice, you know, for a date night, if you want to get dressed up a little bit, like what Anita's wearing would be appropriate. I mean, you know. She always oh, excuses. It's though. nice. Yeah. Let's <laughs> see. I will be there Saturday. Yes. I have a date. Oh, Ooh, she's got a date. Oh, <laughs> a <little bit> <laughs> All right, celebrating over 42 years now, Orchestra classic, Classics at 7 o'clock. Remember the venue change at Copa High School this Saturday. Tickets are $15 for general admission, but children 12 and under are, are no charge. <laughs> Good job, Jennifer. It's Good job. Added value. <laughs> And students it's a with, bonus. <laughs> students with an Arizona Western College ID, ID just $5. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. If people have any questions, you can call 366-7913. Again, that's the Orchestral Classics and Janet Jones and Shandy or Shandy? Shandy. Shandy Topper will be there also directing... Mm -hmm. I want to make sure I have all my terminology yeah, right. Yeah. I was like, you're really shooting for that, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, we want to thank you ladies both so much for coming in and joining okay, us on Today welcome. in Yuma. Thank, thank you. you. All Thanks right. Having us. No problem. Yeah. It's time for our Lotus Day Spa and Salon Selfie in the Courtyard. Mm -hmm. Today in Yuma is brought to you by Classic Accounting. With 30 years of experience and knowledge, you can trust them with your business payroll and monthly bookkeeping needs. Give them a call today at 343-1040. And Sprague Sports, check out the Sprague's difference. Buy, sell, trade, or consign firearms with free expert appraisals. Sprague's offers local price matching and a lifetime warranty. You can find them at Sprague's.com. And I always hate being the bearer of bad news because we are looking at triple digits this weekend. And the National Weather Service has said we do have an excessive heat watch. It's early in May for us to have these temperatures, so please keep that in mind. And if your home isn't comfortable, it might be time to call a professional. Call Quick Refrigeration at 782 369 They've been heating and cooling the Yuma area since 1955. 
and Advocate Pest and Wildlife Specialists. They have been performing pest control services in the Yuma area for over 20 years. They are licensed with the Arizona Game and Fish Department for Safe Humane Wildlife Relocation. You can give them a call today at 928-343-9149. Better yet, go like them on Facebook because they have some pretty awesome deals going on right now. <laughs> they sure do. They sure. We'll be back after the break with Leah Littlewood from the Littlewood Fine Arts Co-op here in Yuma. It's Today in Yuma on Z93, Outlaw Country, MonsterMediaYuma.com, and the FTS Automotive Facebook Live feed. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, ladies, very much. Thank you. Oh, Thank you. That was fun. Okay. All right. Right over here, right here, right here. We're gonna take a picture yeah, real quick. We take a selfie that when you use it for social media and our website. Ready? Smile. Awesome. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. See you Saturday. Yeah. Awesome. Bye. Thank you. Of course, anytime. <laughs> Don't forget you All are right. on Facebook Live. Oh, cool. Good morning. Good morning. And who is this gentleman you bring with you? This is Doug Gates. He is helping with uh, planning it all and also um, helps with All Yuma. Jennings? Yes. The, uh, with the All Yuma Center. Mm -hmm. Talking about Pride. Which is May 19th. Oh, May 19th. I think Dave hides my pants on Thursdays. <laughs> <laughs> I think you just pick them up on Wednesdays and forget <laughs> to grab them on Thursdays. Oh, no, I'm going to blame Dave. <laughs> there you go. That sounds like a plan. Yeah, blame, blame he him. He raises my chair a quarter of an inch. <laughs> <laughs> my headphones are over here. That'll, that'll work. Yes. I like your guys' palette up front. That's cool. Do you? <laughs> yeah. cool. I'm going to hang them up in that corner, but I want a uh, fishing line. Oh, I have some at home. I can bring it. Perfect. <sighs> How are oh, you? Good. Very good. What are we talking about? We were talking about Pride. Oh, okay. On May 19th. Sounds good. We have 50 seconds. Hi. Um, I have some information uh, about um, the state, the Senate and stuff um, that I got sent. So if you want, we can do it after this since we'll still have a little bit more time. Yeah. Is it for Red for Ed? Yeah. I also wanted to say that um, the co-op is open for kids that don't have anything to do to do their art. Oh. Yeah. And we're, we're saying B-Y-O-S. Bring no, your own stuff. Bring your own <laughs> canvas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're trying to make it a thing. It's okay. Yeah. Sounds good. All right. Just about ready. The Terry that was here, her daughter Jessica, the prints I have in my office. Oh, she's did? she's the one that created those. Oh, okay. <coughs> All right, here we go. Welcome back to Today in Yuma. I'm Jennifer. And I'm Teresa. We have more guests in the <coughs> studio today. I said at the beginning it was going to be a busy morning. Definitely. <laughs> we have Leah Littlewood with the Littlewood Fine Art Co-op, and we have Doug Jennings with the All Yuma Center here, and we're going to be talking about Pride that's coming up later this month. Woohoo! Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Time to party. <laughs> well, tell us about this event. Awesome. Well, um, we were approached by All Yuma. Uh, we had already had it in the works to have it on May 19th because regular Pride is in June and we wanted to not compete with other places. And since Yuma has never had one, we just thought it would be a really good idea um, since times are changing and everyone's a little bit more welcoming and inviting, like, let's do this. And so uh, we've been hosting um, all the All Yuma Center at the co-op having monthly meetings and uh, 
it's got a, a lot of steam behind it. If you want to talk a little yeah, bit about it. Yeah, give us that. give us the background on all Yuma. I, I, well, I don't know um, much about it. We are a new organization here in Yuma. We are currently working on becoming a nonprofit. Our main goal is to have a location here in Yuma where the LGBTQ community can go meet, hang out, get advice, do research, and also we're opening it up to all Yuma, mm -hmm. not just the LGBT community, but everybody that needs a safe place to go from being getting bullied to needing advice to talking to a counselor. That is our main goal. And our first step was to do fundraising to be a nonprofit. Mm -hmm. We've reached that goal. Now uh, we're working with a retired judge <coughs> here in Yuma and we're working on becoming a nonprofit. A lot of people don't know there are multiple steps you do have to take in order oh. to achieve that nonprofit status. <laughs> yes, oh. and it, it, the cost is like a thousand dollars. You know, you have to be incorporated first and then you have to go through uh, the nonprofit status, which you have to work with the state, and it's an ongoing effort. We've been trying to do this since December of last year, and we finally reach the point where we can start filing our necessary paperwork. Well, what are some of the things people can expect to see at the Pride event on May 19th? Well, uh, we're going to have music playing, we're going to have food, uh, there will be a parade starting at 4 o'clock. Um, first parade in Yuma, it's going to be on 2nd Avenue from 14th Street to 15th Street. It's only a block long. Hey, it's something. It, <laughs> yep, it's a start. So yeah. next year we can do two blocks and then grow farther and farther. Um, the parade will go to the Littlewood Co-op and then the festivity, festivities afterwards will begin. Uh, we're going to have music playing. We're having drag shows. We have drag queens coming from El Centro, and we have local ones also. And gonna be Phoenix. Yep, yeah. yep uh, they're going to be performing. Uh, uh, we have a DJ that has offered to supply the music for that. We're having some contests as well. Uh, the best pride outfit, best couple, uh, best drag, uh, best body paint, because we will have a, a person there doing body paint, um, best funniest outfit, and the best prettiest outfit. Well, and, and and I love that you're doing the parade because if anybody's ever been to Pride anywhere else, they the usually they're in bigger cities, so the parades are ginormous. <laughs> um, but I love that you're hey you're starting small and hopefully it grows and you'll be able to do something larger. But I want to stress to people, you know, just because you may not be gay or lesbian or whatever the case may be, you can still go and show mm -hmm. your support. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. going to be, I guarantee you, it's it's going to be a blast. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so yes. and what what. Don't, what ages is it open to? It's it's open to, to anybody. Uh, we do ask that if there are minors, please have an adult yeah. with you. Um, I'm, this is a dry event, which means no alcohol mm -hmm. during the event. We want this to be a family-oriented event. We don't want people to say, oh, I wanted to go, but I couldn't take the kids. No, the kids are more than welcome to come. My seven-year-old is going to be there. Mm -hmm. So, you know, more kids, the better. It, it opens their, their minds to, you know, other options out there. Yes, and this will be a dry event. We'll have uh, Taco Lachelle serving food. Um, there'll be other vendors. The selfie, Vintage Selfie Group will be there. Mm -hmm. So we'll have lots of made props. We are asking for volunteers to help us decorate on May 7th from 11 to 2 at the co-op. Um, so we'll be decking out the whole place. That'll be super exciting. Is there a charge to attend? No. no. Nope. No. This is a free event. Um, the vendors, uh, if you want to buy something from the vendors, of course, they charge the food. You, mm -hmm. you know, you have to pay for it. But to get into the event, to see the music, and yep. to see the drag shows, everything is free. Well, let's tell them where the little co-op is. It's um, 1480 South 2nd Avenue. So it's basically in between um, 15th Street and 14th Street across from the um, Municipal Court. Yes. And Leah, real quick, um, you wanted to mention something, um, since we've had the Red for Ed movement going on, you have something going on at the co-op. Yeah, so we wanted to welcome kids to um, who don't have anything to do, obviously, with this um, school closure to come to the co-op and 
uh, BYOC, Bring Your Own Canvas. And um, I'll be there um, helping people draw. We also have our Free Paint Friday, mm -hmm. and we just want kids to have a little place. We've already had about 17 kids come in oh, this wow. this week, so that's good. And and canvas can be anything. It doesn't actually have to be a canvas. No. It can be no. a piece of pottery. Something it can yeah, yeah, exactly. Something to put to do your art actually on. Mm -hmm. So exactly. All right. Well, mark your calendars. That is May 19th, a pride event taking place at the Littlewood Co-op, and the parade starts at four o'clock. Four o'clock. Four o'clock. Second Avenue from 14th Street to 15th Street. And the first drag show starts at 6. At 6 p.m. <laughs> oh. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. That's fantastic. I'm excited to see um, all, everybody there. Cause mm -hmm. I, I've been to other ones in, 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 like I said, bigger cities, and they're always a lot of fun. So mm -hmm. yeah. oh, hopefully yeah. we'll bring in that here. And, <laughs> yep. exactly. Cindy says, hi, Doug. Hi, Leah. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you both so much for coming in. We're glad to have you here. Thank Thanks yeah. for having right. us. It's today in Yuma. We're going to take our Lotus Day Spa and Salon Selfie in the courtyard. Then we're going to come back and talk a little bit more about education education and do yes. our firehouse birthday shout out sounds good and we'll talk d-backs because it's throwback day so we're wearing our throwback Woo. jerseys <laughs> we'll be back on z93 outlaw country monster media yuma.com and the fts automotive facebook live feed awesome guys thank you thank you so much I would have known I would have wore my all new t shirt. <laughs> all right. All right. Got a no worries. <laughs> Smile. <laughs> Thank, you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you guys. Bye. Bye. Have a good one, guys. You, you too. too. Then your ears are different. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, didn't I just hear that? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> we still have two minutes. Or 50 seconds ish. Why is it only showing 50 seconds? For oh, there it went. Uh, just hadn't kicked into the other one yet? No. <sighs> Yeah, um, the information, I'll pull it up here. Come on. Oh, Pongo. I, I, it basically, the next step of where that bill goes is what they're waiting on. Oh, and that was the husband earlier. That information that I was reading earlier. <sighs> Really? Hmm. Morning, Luli. Yes, Cindy. Busy, busy day. <laughs> it's pretty much been the case all week, too, though. Yes. <laughs> There's always time to shake a shower, dude. Just saying. Every time I hear, every time I hear that commercial, I'm like, no. There's always time to take a shower. <laughs> there is. There is. Thirty seconds. All righty. Lumpy rug day. I don't. <laughs> what? I don't make him up. Okay. It sounds like you might be. <laughs> shoes day. Different colored shoes day. It rolled over to the next line. Oh, I was like, what? <laughs> But for the National Specially Able Pets, I read it as Ablid. I'm like, what's an Ablid? I didn't see that. <laughs> they didn't line up right at first. I'm like, Ablid Pets. What? All right, here we go. Yep. Welcome back to Today in Yuma. I'm Jennifer. And I'm Teresa. We want to thank all of our wonderful guests this morning for stopping by and visiting with us. Dr. Paula, 
River De Niro. We also had Janet Jones. And Terry. I love the way you say that. <laughs> I'm looking at it, sounding it out. <laughs> Terry Irizarry with Yuma Orchestra. And then we had Leah Littlewood and Doug Jennings with Pride Day in Yuma coming up on May 19th. All right, you've got some education information to share. Yeah, um, I received some information about basically the next step that happens. Um, I know the governor signed um, this morning, um, but there's another step. So around 1, between 1 and 1.30, um, the, the Senate is going to meet, and they um, are going to complete the other bills and sign the budget. Um, this means they can make changes if they want to on what the governor has already signed. So they will be back around 1, 1 1.30 to discuss vouchers, and that can change those, the, they can change those immediately at the meeting, um, and they can possibly replace them um, at the same time. What that means, if they change those vouchers, the money that is designed, um, designated to the K through 12 budget can be taken out and, and give the vouchers to private schools. So there's still some things that are not resolved. So I think that's pretty much what we're waiting on um, to hear what's going to go on with the Red for Ed movement if our students indeed are going to be going back to school tomorrow and things like that. So that's kind of still why everybody's on the fence. So there's still another step that needs to be taken and um, until everything is final and, and, and done the way that it said it was going to be done, that's where we hang on the fence. I know we had a lot of people watching the different live feeds that oh, were coming yeah. out last night. And, yeah. and I followed various things involving politics over the years anyway. So I've watched this type of thing. But some of the comments that were coming in, people were just... Uh, they are not aware that it takes so long. Yeah. That you have so many that want to have their voice heard and they want to explain why they had a, a or nay vote on one particular thing and where they stood on it. Mm -hmm. And so many different elements were on the budget were being included last night. Yeah. So I, people are like, come on already, come and on. And that's one of the things that makes it hard is because there's so many things lumped into these one this one particular bill or these different budgets and all this stuff. That's what makes it hard. Um, so... Crossing our fingers, everything gets done today. That's right. Well, we have some birthdays to share here on Today in Yuma, courtesy of Firehouse Subs. The Firehouse Public Safety Foundation saves lives through donation grants, and when you buy more subs, you save more lives. That's right. Happy birthday today to Georgia Boyd. She is celebrating, along with Michael Podborny Sr., one of my cousins. Jennifer's cousin day. Yeah, it's your week because I don't have very many. <laughs> Reba Talavera, she lived in Yuma for a couple years and her and her husband relocated to Texas and then they got hit by the hurricane. Aww. They've been there a month in their brand new beautiful hey, house. welcome to Texas. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and then Ashley Greenbank is celebrating birthday today with Maggie Zamudio, Doyle McCurley, a bunch of people in town might know Doyle. Also, Summer Carr and Debbie Alvarez. Well, happy birthday to all of you. If you have a birthday shout-out you'd like us to give, all you need to do is go to MonsterMediaYuma.com, click on the Today in Yuma tab, and scroll down just a little bit. You will see the Firehouse Subs logo along with the little Celebrate banner. Right there, there's a little entry form. Fill it out. Go straight to our inbox. Please give us 24 hours. That way we can uh, make sure to get it in on time. And then what we do with the week's uh, birthdays is we put them all into a little box. And on Monday, we will draw the prior week's birthday winner. And they win a free sub, free medium sub, drink, chips, and a dessert. Yep. Sounds good. Now we want to congratulate the Super Aqua Squad from Valley Horizon School. It's a team comprised of young ladies, and they're going to the Global Innovation Competition. Mm -hmm. And a GoFundMe has been set up to help the team make their way to the, the competition, which is in San Jose, June 18th through the 20th. If you are able to help at all, they have a goal of $6,790. That's going to be covering food and lodging. That's for, pretty specific. For, yes, <laughs> lodging for the week. They've provided a breakdown. You know, they're not they're not looking to to uh, they grease just the coffers get, no, here. No, they want to get there. That's right. And they have some hashtags. There's Super Aqua Squad and Operation Water Drop Yuma. <laughs> and again, this team of young ladies. They've worked very very hard and. We would love to see them just take it all at this competition. They're at $400 so far, so they have a ways to go. Yes, they but do. even a $5 donation here and there will help out. Sounds good. You know, I've gotten a couple calls this week about um, if we're doing any more d backs giveaways. We have lots of d backs giveaways. We do. <laughs> We've already given away the tickets for this week's games, mm -hmm. but we are doing a text-to-win contest for d backs tickets for next 
Friday's game. Okay. That's Friday the 11th. And, oh my goodness, have we received a bunch of entries. I get a little <laughs> daily breakdown. I stay away from it until it's time to draw because it just goes crazy all day long. <laughs> well, we are giving you until Monday the 7th at 7 a.m. to text your keyword in or text a, mo a bunch of times. You can t okay, so with all, as all of our contests, you can text as many times as you like. Each time you text, you are entered to win. Make sure you're getting the bounce back to, to ensure that you're doing it properly. But yes, you can text as many, 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 many times as you would like between now and next Wednesday. Uh, or next Monday. Monday, I'm Monday sorry. the 7th at, at 7 a.m. Uh -huh. And all you need to do is text the keyword D-backs, D-B-A-C-K-S, to, you do need the area code, 928 343 And these, you are texting for four baseline reserve tickets to the game on the 11th at 6.40 p.m. D-backs versus the Nationals. And the four pack is valued at $128. You can see our complete general contest rules at monstermediayuma.com. Sounds good. And they did lose last night, but there's another game today at 12.40 p.m. The fourth out of that series against the Dodgers. Yes. And thank you for the throwback jersey, too. You're welcome. I we It's Throwback Thursday, and today's an important game. So we definitely um, need to pull this one out so we can keep our streak going. We're shooting for number our 10th series. Um, so definitely got our fingers crossed. And what time's the game today? 12.40 p.m. Ooh, we have to get to listen to it on yep. Outlaw Country. Yes, <laughs> I, I love listening at work, too. I do, too. It, it's funny because last time we were, <laughs> it was on, and uh, I was listening to it, and I'm in the, oh, no, or, oh, I'm yelling, and I'm, I'm just watching the game, and I'm listening to the game, and, and know, he's sorry. Like, what, what's, 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 going what's going on? Happened? I'm listening to the game. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, today is May 3rd, and today's National Montana Day. Beautiful state. Mm -hmm. Never been there, but I hear it's beautiful. <laughs> It's beautiful. It's also <laughs> National Textiles Day. Okay. Oh, nice. National Chocolate Custard Day. I'm Kane. National I'm Garden Meditation Day. I think we should do that in a courtyard. I think this is the first time last year when I tasted custard. Because you went, uh, did you go get it for us? From um, Freddy's. Freddy's. From Freddy's, that yeah. That's the first time I had ever tried custard. Well, it's also this next one. I'm a little, I'm a little <laughs> suspect. It's, it's hilarious. National Lumpy Rug Day. Hey, I guess it needs to be recognized too, right? I, I, there, there is a day for everything. I, I, it's also National Paranormal Day. Oh, okay. So lumpy rug, like rug on the floor or I, rug on your head? I don't, I'm thinking rug on the floor. I'm thinking rug on the floor. And I, I'm not going to lie, I may have a family member that's a little bit OCD and they had tons of rugs and I used to go make them lumpy on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. It was good for him. It, it helped him. It helped him through the process? Yeah, every time he walked past one that I had messed up, he would have to go back and fix. <laughs> so you do it all the time? I do little things like that <laughs> to him. He, he, and it takes him a little bit to find out. So, but I'm gonna admit it. that's one of the things I love about you. I love it. I love it. And and there's certain things. There's certain things. And every time I go to his house, he's like, he, watches he knows. Like, there's a couple that I had. I had to tell him that I was doing because he couldn't figure it out. <laughs> and one time I got. I got caught um, messing with his bricks outside because he had some, I, and he, I know he's listening. I know he's listening. I'm surprised he's not called yet. But he had some bricks that were kind of like spread, kind of like a sun, you know, sunrise. And any time we were in that area, I would stop and I would stand him tall. I know who it is now. Yeah. And um, <laughs> I purposely would do it, even if we were not going to his house or whatever the case may be. And there's kids that go past there to go to, that used to go past there to go to school. And he thought it was the kids, but then the neighbor told on me. It was you? <gasps> it was me. I, so lumpy rugs, I, I tend to do that at certain people's houses. <laughs> on, on, uh, brick brick making crooked day <laughs> i'm sure that's it. I, i'm going to submit that to the list. yeah well and we have lumpy rugs so <laughs> well today's also national raspberry popover day and national specially abled pets day oh and then there's national two different colored shoes day well i wish i would have known that when i put my shoes on that's usually on accident when you dress in the dark National Day of Prayer. I know they had an event down at yeah. Gateway Park this morning and provided breakfast for a lot of individuals. It is also National Day of Reason, which a lot of people really don't pay attention to. Yeah. And World Password Day. Hey, it's a good day to go change your passwords. It is. We're trying <laughs> to remind people in this day and age, a lot of the technology and those hackers mm -hmm. and fishers are getting more clever. Mm -hmm. So make sure you change them on a regular basis, but also make sure it's something you can remember. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, 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 and a lot of, they give you, like, there's a lot of, uh, 
tips on what you can do to when you do change your passwords so they're easily remembered and things but I always forget but the easily remembered stuff is what exactly yeah what, well they're easily re they're easily remembered by hopefully us. for by us by okay. our own person but sometimes I, half the time I'm just creating a new password anyways because I can't remember the other one well the ones that say childhood best friend or the street you lived on or your first pet I'm like well who did we use I don't because there's different people in the house was it the Yuma was it Sa I don't remember just pick one and use that one all the time. Yes. No, that's, you don't keep the same thing all the time. That's how people <laughs> hack you. Oh, my goodness. Have you learned nothing? That's not, not your password. Not, <laughs> the answers to the your answers. security <laughs> questions can be the same. Your exactly. password changes. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> all right. It is today in Yuma. Coming up tomorrow, we have Carrie Ring from the city. She's going to be talking about Cinco de Mayo. Yeah. And we also have... Sergeant Major Nelson from YPG coming on, oh. and it's Foodie Licious Friday. Get those Yum. entries in for the 251 Downtown Twisted Kitchen gift certificate. Go to monstermediayuma.com, click on the Foodie Licious tab, and enter to win there. It's today in Yuma. We will see you all later. Don't forget, D backs coming up a little bit later on Outlaw Country, but next on Z93, it's the Bob and Sherry Show. KCYK Yuma and KLJZ Yuma. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Go D-backs.